Hi everybody, it's Simon Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching. Today, this week, I've got a few things to show you. One of them being my caterpillar crop, which I actually got two weeks ago and I forgot to share it last week. So I did share this over on my Facebook page and it was actually really interesting because I've been looking at these for probably the last year. Um, just been a bit unsure really whether to go for it or not. It's really, really mixed reviews. And when I decided to take the leap and get it, it was on offer on Crate and Craft. And I thought, yeah, I'm gonna get it, mainly because it said lifetime guarantee on the blade, which for me is a big thing because I don't wanna have to keep replacing them. And since moving from trimmers to guillotine, although they call this a trimmer, it's a rotary blade. I haven't had to buy blades because I use the Tim Holtz guillotine, you see that in a lot of my tutorials, the mini one, or I've also got the Tonic, the larger size one, and they're both guillotines and I love them, but I do have a thing about knives and sharp blades and things like that, it's just a personal thing, I always get really, really kind of nervous with them. So that was one of the things for me, or you know, the reason why I got this, because you can't cut yourself. So it's child friendly, it's, you know, it's really good. The blade is hidden underneath here. So, and it self sharpens. So every time you cut, it self sharpens. So, and I've been using it, I've been cutting a lot of paper recently. Um, the, the day I got it, I cut over a hundred pieces because I'm actually working on a big project and it has been brilliant. And when people were commenting on Facebook, people were saying they'd had theirs for years and they love it. And then other people were saying, nope, don't like it at all. Didn't like it and I, you know, they sold it and things like that. So it's been really interesting. I personally, I'm really enjoying this. So you have the extendable blade, um, arm there, sorry. So it extends to 18 inches and it is 17, 18, 19 inches deep. You've also got centimeters here, but also there's a few people I, th I think, I could be completely wrong, that maybe, I don't know, you could be using it slightly wrong because this moves ever so slightly. So it's almost like a lock. So if it's loose, this won't run. This will kind of like wobble. Now that's okay, because they say that you push it against the metal and you cut. However, if you just twist this and it locks in, that doesn't move, that's not wobbling now. It stays straight. And I don't know if that maybe is where people maybe because some people said it didn't cut straight. I've certainly not seen that. So you just get a really nice cut. And again, I get the same with my Tim Holtz guillotine. I can cut very, very thin strips i can do this with my guillotine so you know do i think it's any better than the tim holtz um no i think it cuts the same but for me it's much safer so that was my reasoning for getting this more than anything was the safety but look you you get all these tiny little spirals and i can get that with the tim holtz guillotine if any of you are wondering she keeps saying tim holtz what's she on about i'm on about this one this is the mini and i still do like it but Oh, it just scares me. <laughs> so it's down to personal preference at the end of the day. So yeah, it's entirely up to you at the end of the day. Also, this does have a light. However, it only works if you've got thinner and lighter paper, but the idea is, is that you can see through underneath here. So can you see, I can still see that metal running there. Whereas, but if I put, probably gonna show it a bit better, there you go. So you can see that. So that's it's great if you've got lighter cardstock, but if you're using if you use dark, you don't see it at all. That's just the shadow from the bar. You can't see that light at all. So um, is it something I'm going to use? No, probably not. I work quite well without there being a light. It takes four double A, so just standard batteries. But I like it. It's it's pretty lightweight. It's you know it's smaller as well. They do do the Caterpillar Pro, which is the larger surface one, and I think that comes up at because this is nine oh eighteen. I think that comes out at sixteen, and it's got a drawer and all other bits and pieces on it. So yeah, if you are interested and you are thinking actually yeah you want something a bit safer than yes, I definitely would you know um, recommend this one I really like it but I'm glad I've got it but at the end of the day these things are all down to personal preference there are great trimmers out there I just don't want to have to keep paying out for blades and the fact that this is now a lifetime guarantee as long as none of this breaks it's going to last me forever so yeah it was a investment I paid 58 pound for this so it was a bit more than obviously you would normally pay out but when you think my Fiskars replacement blades are five pound and I've probably replaced them five, six times, it's soon going to add up. So 
I don't need to worry about that anymore. Although I do still use trimmers if I'm cutting within card because these are hard to line up and you don't really have a grid and stuff to work with. So yes, <laughs> the more and more you do paper craft, you'll probably find that you need a few things. So I've got my mini, I've got this one and I do still have a trimmer for when I'm making those kind of cards or projects where I need to cut within the card. Um, then they're always handy for that. But yes, so this was what I got a couple of weeks ago, but I forgot to share it last week. Then I received a order from Arteza, so I do still collaborate with them. I haven't, I do use their product in uh, many of my tutorials, but I haven't done like a review for a while. And um, I thought I would just kind of use the product I got for the minute, because I've got the blender pen markers, which I've been using in many tutorials, and I'm really enjoying those. And I've got my water brush pens as well. And there will be a series coming up. It won't be out yet. It's going to come at the end of the month. So that'll make more sense when that happens. But this is what I got. So I have these here. These are the water brushes. Now, I did say to Tanya at um, Arteza, bless her, um, either or, because I think they're exactly the same. I don't see any difference with them. Everything on the back's the same. The only difference obviously is the colour, but in terms of the barrel and the brush sizes, everything is, is exactly the same. These are just completely different packaging and pens in that sense. But what I'm trying to get across, sorry, is the fact that you get times three of the small brushes and then times three of these wider, sorry, you get times three of these thin brushes and then you get times three of these more chiseled style. And it's the same on that one there. The back of the packaging is exactly the same. I looked online, it's all the same, but the prices do vary. So I really can't see a difference. I will find out from Arteza if there is. Let me open up here. Let's just get straight in there and just have a quick little look. And I'm gonna go with the real widest ones first. So here's this one here and this one here. Look, they're exactly the same. Even the barrel is the same height. Everything is the same, apart from this has got this push bit here, but that says push there, but it's just straight onto the barrel, whereas this has got like this little case, rubber case around. Everything's the same. I think one of them's an older style and then they've gone into a newer one. Maybe this is older and now they've gone with this more branding one because if you now have no packaging, you wouldn't know that that's our taser. There is nothing on there at all. So if you're someone who likes branding, then go for those ones. But in terms of how they work, I don't think there's any difference or whatsoever. So again, the reason I went for them is because of these larger, more obscure shaped brushes. Well, they're not obscure at all. They're just <laughs> in, a bar in a water barrel as opposed to on a, a normal you know, paintbrush. So um, yeah, that's that one. I'm just making sure I get the right lids back on. And don't really want to break those bristles they're not the easiest to get in that's just I guess once they're wet and they've been used then that will change them slightly then you have that one which is again the same yeah look so they're thicker on the side there's there's literally no difference guys so because I, I think that's why I, I kept not putting them off but just I was meaning to ask and <laughs> I think Tanya gets so many emails from people, she didn't still quite answer what I was asking in terms of what is the difference. And I honestly don't think there is, guys. I think it's just a matter of them just rebranding. And um, I think these are possibly the newer ones and this was the older ones. So yeah, so I've got them. So <laughs> I've got a ton of water brushes because I also have their other ones, which are their, these ones. And these get really, I use these a lot. I really like them. They're stained, they're used, and that's what it's all about for me. Um, but these are thinner. So these are different again to some of these. So I will be using these. And when I do the reviews in more detail, I will talk about them a little bit more. But yeah, I've got plenty of water brushes to keep me going. Because of the water brushes, I, well, actually I ordered Went, I chose the gouache first and then chose the brushes as well just because I thought I could try them with it. So these are the gouache which is, it's well a lot of people say it's in between watercolour and acrylic paint. It is a very very opaque watercolour. So for me who likes watercolouring, gouache has been something that I have looked at. I've you know watched many many tutorials of people using them and it's just something I've just never really got around to using myself. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to, and I'm gonna start doing some proper painting again. And that's why I wanted to get these. So I did ask for the 60 color. So you get tons, I can take them all out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 trays. So yeah, I thought, well, 
why not? I don't have any, let's give them a go. And be love all the packaging. That's one thing I would say as well, is our taser always, always package wonderfully. These arrived, you know, in great condition because they do look after them, but it's just such a nice box. And I love that you just have, again, at a glance, all of your colors. And then I saw these and I thought, okay, what is this? So I think they are called twee markers because they are twin nib. So it could be twi, but twi doesn't seem to make any sense. But it's 100 twi or twi. I'm going with twi, 100 twi markers. Let me know what you think. Do you think it's twi for twin, twin, twi? Or do you think it's twi? But I think it's twi. So you get 100, and I was quite interested by them. So it's 100 unique colours, water-based ink, blendable, compact, ideal for water techniques and journaling. If you think of a alcohol marker, it's that kind of thing, but they're water-based. So yeah, I'm looking forward to using them. There's again, a huge variety of colors. Let me just take these out. You get one, two, three, four, five trays. Um, again, I'm gonna go and do reviews on these, so that will be more detail for you. I'm not gonna go into that now. I'm just really just showing you what I've got. But coloring is something I do a lot off camera. So I will be sharing reviews on these and I will be doing more stuff using my coloring in tutorials because many of you do ask and because I got the gouache I did say to Tanya what paper would you recommend I do have watercolor paper and she said that would be great so I already have the Arteza watercolor paper but she did also recommend this so this is the mixed media pad you get two in the pack so these are huge these are a3 size 60 sheets 180 gsm and they're acid oh couldn't get that out then acid free spiral bound ideal for wet and dry media so yeah they should work well with the gouache and obviously my other you know mediums as well so yeah i think it's good they're perforated so you can obviously take your artwork out but yeah they are larger than i would use i probably i'm more of an a4 size girl but hey you can cut them down and you get absolutely tons so yeah thank you arteza and all of the kind of i guess review videos will be on their way and then lastly, I mentioned last week that I wanted to get this magazine because it works really nicely with the Papercraft Essentials magazine where I got the lovely autumnal leaf and the embossing folder. And I showed you the card at the end where they combined the two magazines because they're like sisters for each other. So this is Creative Stamping Magazine. This is issue 74. There's a few reasons why I wanted this. Firstly, it was because it was designed by Hunky Dory for the Love of Stamps. And I do love the For Love of Stamps range. I just think they do lovely images and they're always lovely to colour. So I will use these with my paints probably that I've received. But I loved it. It was this one here that I really wanted. I don't have anything like this. I don't have pumpkins. I don't have a sunflower. And just, yeah, really, really lovely A4 set of stamps there. Hello Autumn. And this is the magazine here. So as always, you get lots of inspiration. Love the card on the front there with this stamp. And then they've used the poppies there. So this one to build up. And they've used these. It just looks really, really nice. So, and on the back, there's all the inspiration there using those stamps. So yeah, as always, I will link it below. I'll link the Papercraft Essentials one as well. And um, yeah, I'm gonna go and have a cup of tea and read through that one. So there may be another bit added onto this now because I'm waiting on an order from Craft Stash of the Craftwork cards bargains that I ordered and I did share that on Facebook and I know lots of you went and purchased as well because they had 80% off so there was some real yeah great bargains to be had and some happy mail should be coming very soon as well so if that all arrives before I edit and get this one up then I will add it in otherwise that's everything for this week. Okay, so it's another day and I have received my craft stash order, which I did mention about. If I get it, then I will add it into this week. So craft stash on last, yeah, be last week, by the time this goes up, beginning of last week, put up at 80%, up to 80% off everything um, within their craftwork cards range, which I've had quite a lot of things from already and I really do like their product. So I went over there and these were bargains. I put a thing on my Facebook page and I know loads of other, loads more of you have been able to grab some of these bargains. And unfortunately I know some of you missed out. So I do apologize because I know that by the time this goes up, these things are probably sold out. I know that some of these bits already are, but I, the other bits, you may be lucky. They may even have more stuff coming in. I'm not sure, but I picked up, let me take the packaging off because there's a lot of glare. 
Okay, so I picked up these stamp sets. This one is Best Day Ever. I don't have a lot of wedding related stamps and sometimes I get asked to do commissions for wedding cards and things and I find myself using the same real basic ones. So I've just picked these ones up. They're really nice and they've got a beautiful font. You've just got bride and groom, just married, golden, ruby, silver, diamond, which I thought were great. And then save the day, wedding. So they're perfect for um, anniversaries, engagements and weddings. So I just thought that was a handy one to have. And these were... That one was £3.40 and then I got this one here. I do have a similar one, well, I'd say similar. It has the U in a different font, but all the sub kind of titles or words don't have that black block around it. It's just the word. So they are slightly different. And between the two now, I should have quite a nice mix. But you basically just, you know, thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. You get it. So I just thought that was quite a nice one. Yeah, two ninety eight. And then I picked up these. What I've been looking for a nice woodland background one for again for Christmas projects and things that I've got ideas for so this was the winter woodland and this one was £2.50 and then this one here is the embroidery and again I thought it's quite nice for like a knitted jumper and again that kind of Christmas theme and this one was £2.50 again and then these ones which I was so glad I managed to get because I thought they were going to go well they, they've gone now but these were £5.25 they had 80% off I think they were £15 something. Not only are they rose gold, which is just brilliant, you have to um, use your pliers there just to take them apart, but you get obviously the big circle there and then these ones, but when it cuts in it gives you that scalloped edge within the cardstock because usually you lose that or it's on the outside of the circle. This one is on the inside. I have one die like that, but it's a small one and I don't really get to use it. But it's got a lovely cross detail. I mean, you can see the detail a lot better there, what you get. And it also cuts into your paper. So if you haven't got that outer frame and you just use this frame here in the middle of say a six by six card, you will just have all of that piece here cut away and you'll have it. It's going to be brilliant for shaker cards. It'll give it a really nice finish. So I will definitely use it for a shaker card and um, I'll share that in a tutorial because I know quite a few of you have managed to get this one. So yeah, hopefully maybe they might bring it out again or something similar or like I said, they might bring in some more sale pieces. So do keep an eye out. I will share the links below. Then I just got some more of the Dawn Bibby Premium Glue. I do like this one. It's very, very similar to the Art Glitter Glue and um, you get the precision nib. I did find these precision nibs to be smaller than the glitter art, than the art glitter glue. So only by a little bit, but um, yeah, if you're someone that still wants even thinner again, then these ones are that. You just gotta make sure that you've got a stainless steel pin so that they don't get clogged up. So I've got those two again. Like I said, I do like those ones. And then I thought I would try the Kalau book binding. I have the normal Kalau, the all purpose, which you see me use all the time and I adore it. It's my favorite glue. But I thought I would try the book binding as well because whenever I see on forums, someone asks the question, what's the best glue? This one gets mentioned a lot. So I thought I would give it a go as well. So yeah, those are the purchases from Craft Stash. And also I picked up some bits from the charity shop and I have never ever seen these. Now I don't know if these are old or if they're new but just not available in the UK. I've never seen them before. These are Ranger and they're called Big and Juicy Handmade Five Colour Rainbow Raised Felt Paint. So this one, obviously, I don't know if it's been handmade. Someone's done it like you do it yourself. It was plain and then it says Gumdrop. This one is black. This one is red and this is green. They're $1.99 and they are really, really juicy and full of colour. So I was, that's why I'm a bit unsure, like are these old and someone's just never used them? I can't see any date on the back. So you can see there, it's by Ranger, made in the USA and they're huge. Sorry, I probably haven't said, some of you might be thinking, well, what are they, Sam? They're ink pads, but look how big they are. And they are full of color, so they're felt. Now I know I've got lots of ink pads, but these are quite, you know, good colors, red and the, it's Christmas green as well and black. That's just gonna be brilliant. I need to find out what black it is you know and whether I can use it with alcohol markers or whether I can use it with my watercolors but yeah I mean there's minimal use you can tell that there is but it's just yeah so four of these big and juicy so please anybody that has these let me know whether are they any good I mean I have I've done a couple of quick stamping but I mean I can see all of the color in that there's just so much color in them and they're still quite heavy as well non-toxic 
but it tells me very, very little. So these were one ninety nine each, so there was there were only these four. I thought, you know what, I'm going to grab them because I have a really nice Christmas green, which is by it's a, another really old one. But um, yeah, I'll be intrigued to see what this one's like. There's a little bit of glitter on it, so someone's obviously had some glitter out with this one as well. But um, yeah, so let me know if you uh, have these, and hopefully they are good. And if they are, why don't more companies do ink pads this size? Because <laughs> they're brilliant. They don't stack, so they're not obviously, yeah, they're not the easiest to store, and they are quite bo um, bulky. But yeah, I just thought it was quite fun, and. Um, yeah, thought I'd have them. And then I picked up this. Now I used to have this stuff. I don't know what it's called, but I purchased some from Stamping Up. And again, it's very, very thin. It's going to be great for Christmas projects, but really what I want it for is you just get quite a bit. I mean, there's tons on this. This was a pound for this roll of it or spool of it or whatever you call these. And you just kind of wrap it around. And then if I grab some scissors, and kind of like take it off like so and then you put it behind your you put it on top of your card when it's all finished and then stick your sentiment over the top and you have all this lovely sparkly like tinsel kind of thing that's what it reminds me of you but when you wrap it together and you can kind of twist it you get like a nice little kind of accent a little bit of decoration and I really like it so you can make little tassels like I said it's very very fine and um yeah, it was a pound and I saw it and I thought, oh, silver, that's perfect. Because, um, yeah, you can see it's so thick and you can see how thin it is. There's absolutely <laughs> tons on this. So I thought that was a good little find. And then a lovely crafty friend called Kimmy, she had put together a really nice friend mail for me and it arrived today. We had a little nightmare with the customs, obviously coming from the US. Yes, that's all I'm going to say, Kimmy. It was, wasn't it? It was just a little bit of a pain. Anyway, the parcel has arrived and it was just wonderful. So it caught me off guard. It made me cry. Kimmy wrote a lovely letter. I'm not going to read that out. I'm just going to keep that private, but I will show you the wonderful gifts that she has sent me. So I have got this here. Let me take the packaging off. So this is called Dress My Craft. I've never heard of it. It says here, it's made in India, Dress My Craft, and it's from New Delhi. So yeah, it's really nice to kind of find something that you don't have. Now, it doesn't say the weight of the cardstock on here, but honestly, this card is so thick. I reckon it's about 250. It is proper thick cardstock. It's like that card from Lidl. It's beautiful. Now I love hydrangeas and there's very similar colours forming in the garden of these same flowers and just look, I'm going to make a gift bag straight away with these. Just look at these gorgeous prints. Isn't that stunning? It's absolutely beautiful. You get two of each design, single sided, so again these are going to be perfect for gift bags. But look, they've got a slight kind of shine on them. That would be a lovely scrapbook layout. And you have, look at that, oh my god. I don't know whether I prefer that one or the other one actually. Just beautiful, absolutely stunning. You've got this one here, which is almost like a tile. And you've got this one here, which has a lovely, it's almost like a romantic, it's almost like a love letter. I was trying to read parts of it. And uh, it's just really sweet. So that's that one. You get another one there, which again would be nice for a scrapbook layout. You get this pretty one. Another one there, love it. And then that's another script, but with like the sky in the background. Another um, nice kind of scrapbook layout there. And then you finish with this one, which would be great because you can cut right along there and then just kind of fussy cut or cut that strip out and you can pop it on, you know, your cards and stuff. It's going to be really nice. So absolutely adored that one. And to go with that, I've got the small six by six. So with this one, it's the same images, but you get these extra sheets here with like nice little bits to cut out. So that'd be great for the scrapbook pages. But then yeah, it's just it's just smaller and I love it. It's gonna look so cute on cards. Look. It really is gorgeous. So then I pulled this one out of the box and I must admit a little squeal come out because it is my perfect Christmas colours, theme, 
it's just that vintage look. I just absolutely love it. Photo Play is also really nice. I've got the Disney kind of themed one, which I used for a Disney themed scrapbook layout, and I did do a video for that one. They just have absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous prints. So that's an overview there. But what I love about them is you get this 12 by 12 sheet of stickers. Look at them. Oh, it's just so good. Look at the washing line with Santa's clothes, and you've got the socks the Merry Christmas font, you've got the tags there, there's just so much to this and then you get 12 sheets, they're double sided and um, look you get these as well which I always love, great for tags. I think I made a mini album with the small ones from a Echo Park one. Look at these, the mini Santa, I love the backs because you get really nice piece of look so you can use, you don't have to I can use that side for that one and then that and make a nice gift bag. Look at that one there, so you can cut all those down or just keep it as a whole sheet. And you get that lovely print there. So again, you get two of them. Then I've got the polka dot with this one. Again, really, really nice. Look at those big tags. Great for just putting them on a card as well. Going to be really nice for doing Christmas mini albums because I've got my mini albums from last year, which I think again I used a similar, it might have been um, Simple Stories, I think that one was. And then this one here, gorgeous, absolutely love it, love, love, love. So that was that. And then to go with it, I got the mini, really, really cute. So let me just take the bit off there. There we go. So again, exactly the same, but you get all the mini sheets. So look, the tiny little squares there, all of these. Santa is watching, I'd love that one. Look, aren't they great? It's just so, so lovely. Thank you so much, Kim, it really is wonderful. Then I got this one here, which is Botanical Garden by Carter Bella. Absolutely beautiful. Look at these. So again, you get all these beautiful kind of I don't know what they call these sheets, but they've just got such nice tags. I mean, you can have that obviously stuck onto the back of that. You can just have that as a tag on its own. Oh my God, look at these prints. And it's again, it's that watercolor look. So again, I don't know Kim, if you sent that to me because you know I like watercolors, but it's just beautiful, they're absolutely stunning. And it's very different to anything I've got, which again, so great because that hydrangea pack, I have nothing like that at all. And even these kind of colors, I don't really have this kind of yellow and green. So it's just so nice to have a nice mix of things. Look how pretty everything is. This is gonna make a lovely album actually, because you've got things like family time is the best time, friendship, they're gonna make really nice albums. Oh wow, look at that. I'm gonna try and paint that actually. I think I might try and recreate something similar. I really do love that, love the stripes, again those rose prints, believe, you always believe something wonderful is about to happen, whatever you are, be a good one, they're so nice, oh god, I don't want to cut them, <laughs> but I will, I can see some fussy cutting coming on here as well, because I think some of these bits would be really nice to fussy cut, again, absolutely gorgeous, hello beautiful, kindness is better, lovely, Life doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful, blessed. Oh, I like that one. Look at that. I see a lot of gift bags coming, guys. <laughs> These are absolutely stunning. Oh, wow, look at that against that stripe. <gasps> oh, again, I'm just too excited. At least the Christmas one I can kind of put to one side for a minute because I don't touch Christmas. Those of you that know, I don't do any Christmas paper crafts. I know I've got to do a few commissions for magazines, but in terms of personal and doing videos for you guys, not yet. It's way too early. But um, these and this, you're definitely going to see tutorials soon using those. And then also to go with that one, you guessed it, I got the mini 6x6 to go with it. So again, I'm not going to open it because you know how it's going to be. But um, it's nice that I've got, yeah, all those prints again, but in that kind of just scaled down version. So those are papers that I've received. Then she sent me the Tronic Studios card making collection. So this is the box kit. And this was issue, where does it say? It usually says, oh, issue eight. And um, I think she said this one was an exclusive or, or part of it was exclusive to HSN only. So there's something in this, I think, something like that, I need to read the letter again anyway, but either way, it's just really nice to have. Um, 
yeah, this one. So I haven't even opened it yet. So let's have a little look. Okay, wow. If I can find any links, obviously I will try and share them. Look at the size. Oh my gosh, wow. Look at the size of that die. That is a whopper. How big is that one? <laughs> this one measures seven. It's actually slightly over. It's about seven and one eighth of an inch. Yeah, squared. That is a huge die. Now I know from seeing previous tonic kits before, there are so many ways to use these. Like, you know, there's so many different kind of ways that you can put it together. So I think no card would ever be the same kind of thing. Butterfly mosaic stained glass window die set. That is wonderful. And then, so in here, it's like a box within a box. Let me just get into this one. Oh gosh. So I think maybe that's the bit. This is the extra um, added on because then this is what's in the actual box and this all complements this. So that is the other die. So this is the rose and daffodil stained glass window die. So look at that. Can't wait to cut these out and see what they're like. And then you have this embossing folder, which I imagine parts of this would work with this but then you've got the stamps that all go with it friends are like flowers they brighten your day celebrate your day to a special friend birthday wishes so it's practical publishing because obviously this is uk magazines 2018 so but i'm sure i'll be able to find these links somewhere but um oh it's upside down which way is it there we go so yeah, really nice one. So I'm looking forward to trying that and to read and sit down and read a magazine. Wow, look at these prints. God, they're different kind of papers. I've not had them before. Really cool, love that. It's got a bit of a Picasso look about it as well. I know it's stained glass, but it's what it also reminds me of. And these are obviously all cut out with the dies. So yep, I need to have a good look through that because these magazines, I have worked on some of them before and they are just absolutely jam packed full of inspiration. So yes, can't wait to look through that one. And then Belize is actually really excited about these because when I read um, Kimmy's letter that she sent me, she does crochet and she makes, there's some other things that I'll show you in a moment, but these here, because I must admit when I first saw them, I thought, oh, they're coasters. But then reading her letter and they are, for removing your makeup. Now I'm really trying to just do my thing for the environment. I think we're all aware now of our kind of plastic consumption and just loads of other things. So I am really trying to reduce where I can. And this is one of the things, the, the kind of makeup wipes, I actually have just stopped using anyway because they really do kind of irritate my skin. And I have just been using cotton wool, but it'd be really nice now to use these. This is 100% cotton. These are for removing your eye makeup. And then these ones she said you can use on your face. She sent me so many, so I've got more than enough to obviously have some in the wash and use, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I don't wear makeup every day, so that's going to be perfect. So you just put on your makeup remover and then rub it on your face, make them wet and everything. It's, I think they're absolutely genius. I, yeah, I said to her, I said, this is such a good idea. And I, I think I remember seeing somewhere there are some companies that have started doing things like this. But how nice to have these really cute crochet ones. And um, and she said that she hasn't done a crochet for a while. And, you know, sorry if there's any mistakes. My gosh, these are amazing. I mean, I've tried crochet. I can't seem to get my head around it. They're, they're perfect. Look at the circle on them, everything. I think they are wonderful. So they are going in a glass jar. They're going with my makeup and my remover. And yeah, these, well, by the time this goes out, they probably will be in the wash because I would have used them. So this for me, I was quite personal and I just thought it was a really really lovely gesture so thank you so much and then still on the crochet theme she made this box which was a slight slightly adaptive version of my flip top box that I done I'm going to be taking these off definitely and keeping these look she put a little ladybird in the middle of that one so she's got some velcro and inside here are some more goodies and I'm going to keep the box because that's still handy these ones, I, oh, I mean, I love poppies, but we have Remembrance, obviously, today, not too long away. And I'm going to make some of these, I'm going to put little pins on them and have them as a little brooch. And look at these poppies. So we've got a few with a slight orange tone to them, and then these ones in the red. Aren't they beautiful? Look. So, so pretty. Absolutely love them. So I've got six of those. And then... She's done these ones here, so that's like this here. So many, so I can make up these kind of flowers because I've got slightly smaller ones 
and then she's well, actually she's already layered those ones so that's that one like that so yeah there we go how pretty are these going to be so nice as a really fancy gift tag you could stick that onto some you know a circle nice piece of decorative card so you can write on the back side of it but how pretty are they going to be definitely going to be thinking of really nice special ways to use these so yeah I've got the small ones there and then all these doubled ones but you just put a brad through that like she's done on these next ones which I'll show you which I thought was genius I think they're absolutely beautiful and again she's just sent me so much it's so so thoughtful but look at these these are so cute so they are dinky ones but they're little brads so they are embellishments you can put these on your cards which I will definitely be doing what other colour we got um, I think that one in the purple there we go so we've got five five different colours but look and there's the little brad on the back what a clever idea I think that's just wonderful again the perfect looking but they've got that homemade feel about them which is what, something I just love so yeah I just I can't well again you you guys know how appreciative I am of, of everything whether it's comments that you send me whether it's things that you send me you know I just yeah this was never what it was about for me I was just sharing tutorials and then these things have come along and you lovely people you know what can I say? I'm stuck for words. Anyway, then I've got these here, the Paper Studio, and these are faceted adhesive gems, but just really nice colours. So this one here is, I guess, quite Christmassy in terms of the reds and the go um, green and golds there. This is by, oh, Hobby Lobby. Hmm. So I think this is the first thing I've ever, ever touched or owned that's got Hobby Lobby on it. I always see you guys writing in the comments uh, if someone says, oh, where can we get something like this? Does Hobby Lobby stock it? And I think, oh, I'd love to visit Hobby Lobby. So, yeah. Oh, I didn't even realise. And is this, oh, yeah, Hobby Lobby. Mm. <laughs> so I've got these gorgeous butterflies, which I love. And then, yeah, those are the packs. That's the other colours there. Really, really lovely. I'm just like, wow, this is just so, so thoughtful. So let me just pop that because that's still not it. I can't believe this. It was like when I opened all that chocolate from Sandy that she sent me that time. It was amazing. So then in here, in her letter, she said that she sent some stamps to go and compliment the papers. So here is, this is the hydrangea. Yeah, that's right. So this is called Happy Hydrangea. And this is Technique Tuesday. I do have um, a Technique Tuesday stamp, actually. But look, really, really nice. So that's so thoughtful that she's thought about putting some nice stamps to complement the papers. So that's going to go with those. And then look at this. These are the actual ones to go with it. <laughs> so I've got the dies to match the stamps. Oh, my God, I can't wait to use this. They are so, so good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then... So we got the Papercraft Essentials magazine, which had the poppy stencil and the poppy stamps on it, which I have been using. And I've got another tutorial coming with that, actually. But look, oh my God, this is by Penny Black. Don't know who that is, but it's a cling mount, which I love the, the rubber stamps. Look at this. And it's perfect for me to watercolour. Again, whether, Kimmy, you've been listening to me talk in my tutorials, but I love stamps that don't have lots of black in them. It's pretty much just outline because for me now I can use my watercolours. I can just do my own thing with it and I can't wait. And because it's slightly off to the right hand side there, that's going to sit nice on a card and it'll probably go within a five by seven card as well, which is my preferred side um, size. But you can see how it looks there. Really, really lovely. So that's that one. And then this is really cool. It's just got lots of tags. So this is scrapbook.com. Again, I saw it and I was like, oh, scrapbook.com. Again, we I always hear it and see it, but I don't ever have anything from there. So I guess it's the same for you guys as well outside of the UK. You hear me talk about many things that you don't, you know, have the stores for or, you know, the facilities to be able to get to them. So so this one is build a bunting. Oh, I see. Okay, so you stamp out all the different buntings or whatever ones you want, and then you put the letters within them. That's really quite sweet. And it's easy to cut as well. And it might, that might even cut the, I've got a stamping up bunting in that shape. And I reckon it would uh, cut those out. So that's going to be a handy one. And then I got a really nice magazine. I think that was just part of the magazine there. This is scrapbook and cards. I love the smell of the magazine. It smells just like really new. <laughs> 
but I love all the inspiration for scrapbook layouts. Because again, I do still do them, guys. I know I've got, actually, I've got, I think, about three tutorials, but I just haven't edited them yet. I do still do it. Again, it's the kind of things I do off camera. I don't always share everything because, yeah, it's just nice to just craft and not have to worry about videoing it and editing and all that kind of stuff. But I do have some to go up, but it's nice to actually look at these layouts here. I think I recognise some of these these um, layout pieces from, I think they might be like Paige Evans. You can kind of know, you know, you kind of know if it's a Paige Evans layout because of the digital cut, that's it, the file, cut file that she does. But um, yes, yeah, so there's lots of inspiration there, lots of nice things to read actually. It'd be quite good to read something that's not, I guess, all about the UK and the UK crafting industry. So yeah, that was really nice. I'm looking forward to that. So that is what the wonderful Kimmy has sent me. Kimmy, from the bottom of my heart, honestly, this is just so, so thoughtful and it's so lovely of you to just put this together and yeah, and just think of the things that I like and it's, I just think you've really added a personal touch to it and <laughs> I can feel myself <laughs> starting to cry again. Thank you so much. It really is lovely and um, yeah, like I said, this is not what I do this for. This is just a really nice um, extra. So anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you, Kimmy. And um, yeah, see you all again soon for another tutorial. Bye.